Have you ever wondered what's going on inside your body right now? Imagine for a moment that your body is like a huge bustling city. Crazy idea, right? But guess what? In many ways, it is. In fact, your body is home to trillions of tiny living units called cells, and they all work together like busy little city workers to keep you alive and healthy. Isn't that amazing? These cells are so small, you need a microscope to see them. Hundreds of them could fit on the head of a pin. Yet together, they make up everything in your body from your skin and muscles to your heart and brain. In today's episode of How the Human Body Works, we're pulling out our microscopes and shrinking down to explore cells, the tiny cities inside you. That's right, roughly 37 trillion cells are inside you right now. That number is mind-blowing. It's 37 trillion trillions. That's 37 plus 12 zeros. These cells come in all shapes and sizes and do all sorts of jobs. Today, we'll learn how a cell works, why it's like a tiny city, how your daily habits, like what you eat, help these cell cities thrive, and even what happens when cells break the rules, like in cancer. We've also got some cool activities, like building your very own cell model with stuff from around your house. So stick around. You're about to discover the hidden world that makes you possible. So what exactly is a cell? Well, cells are often called the building blocks of life because everything in your body is made of cells. You can think of a cell as the tiniest unit of you that is still alive. Each cell is like a little living packet with all it needs to survive. Your cells provide structure, they give shape to your body's tissues, take in nutrients from the food you eat, convert those nutrients into energy, and carry out specific jobs. Some cells even have super specialized roles, like nerve cells that send electrical signals, muscle cells that contract so you can move, and blood cells that carry oxygen. In fact, your body has about 200 different types of cells, each kind doing a special job to keep you going. Cells are tiny, so tiny that we can't see them without a microscope. To give you an idea of their size, think about a single strand of your hair. It's pretty thin, right? You could line up dozens of average size cells across the width of just one hair strand. And a drop of blood can contain millions of blood cells. Wow. Despite their small size, cells are extremely organized and complex on the inside. Each cell is like a mini world of its own with distinct parts that keep it alive. Let's shrink down even more and take a tour inside a single cell. Prepare to be amazed at our tiny city. Okay, we're now inside a single cell. Welcome. It might look a bit like a weird jelly bubble at first, but look closer. It's actually as organized as a city. Every cell has different parts, and each part has a specific job, just like places in a city do. Let's compare a cell to a tiny city or even a factory. This will help us understand what each cell part, scientists call them organelles, which means little organs, does. The cell membrane is like the city border or security gate. It's the thin outer layer that protects the cell and controls what goes in and out. Only the right things are allowed through. Analogy, imagine city gates or a border checkpoint making sure no bad guys enter and letting in food trucks and resources. In our body, the cell membrane lets in nutrients, water, and oxygen, and kicks out waste products. The nucleus is like city hall or the control center of the cell. It's usually around structures somewhere near the middle of the cell, and it's super important. The nucleus holds DNA, the instructions for everything, and it tells the rest of the cell what to do and when. Just like a city hall sends out instructions to keep a city running, the nucleus issues orders so the cell grows, makes the right things, or divides to make new cells. 
The mitochondria are the cell's power plants, or energy factories. These sausage-shaped structures are where the cell makes energy from the food you eat. If the cell is a city, mitochondria are like the electric company, or power stations supplying energy to all the buildings. When you run around or even blink your eyes, your cells are burning fuel in the mitochondria to give your muscles energy. Fun fact, mitochondria are often called the powerhouse of the cell in science class. And it's true. The ribosomes are like tiny factories or construction sites scattered around the city. They put together proteins, which are like the building materials and tools cells need to work. Ribosomes might be attached to a winding network called the endoplasmic reticulum, which you can imagine as the roads or highways of the city. These roads help transport the proteins and other molecules around the cell. There's even a post office of the cell called the Golgi apparatus, which packages and ships proteins to where they need to go, just like a mailroom sorting packages. Cells also have cleanup crews and storage. For example, lysosomes are like recycling centers or garbage trucks. They help break down waste and old parts in the cell so they can be reused or thrown away, keeping the cell clean. And vacuoles, more common in some cells like fat cells or plant cells, are like storage warehouses, storing extra materials or water for later. In human cells, we have small vesicles that store things too, like little storage units spread around. As you can see, even though a cell is tiny, it's full of activity, just like a busy city that never sleeps. All these parts work together smoothly. The nucleus, City Hall, issues instructions, say, we need more energy or time to divide and make a new cell. The mitochondria, power plants, churn out energy using oxygen and nutrients. The ribosome factories build new parts, like enzymes and proteins, as needed. The cell membrane guards the gates, making sure the environment inside stays just right. This balance is called homeostasis, like the cell's thermostat that keeps conditions ideal. Everything is coordinated so that the cell city runs efficiently. It's incredible. Each of your 37 trillion cells is like this tiny self-sufficient city, and you are the mayor of them all without even knowing it. Now that we know our cells are like tiny cities with workers and power plants, let's talk about something super important. Fuel. Just like a real city needs food, water, and resources to keep running, so do your cells. How do cells get their food? Through you. Every time you eat a meal or drink water, you're actually feeding trillions of hungry cells in your body. Your digestive system breaks the food down into nutrients like glucose, vitamins, minerals, and your blood is like a delivery service, kind of like Uber Eats for your cells carrying these nutrients and oxygen to every cell's doorstep. Here's a fun challenge. Try this at home. Do 10 jumping jacks or run in place for a few seconds. Feel your heartbeat or check your pulse after that. Boom, 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 boom. Notice it beating faster? That's your heart pumping extra blood, delivering more oxygen and nutrients to your busy cells that are working overtime when you exercise. Your cells demand more fuel when they're active so your body responds by increasing blood flow. Isn't the body cool? Also, take a deep breath in and out. You're not just breathing for yourself, you're breathing for all your cells. The oxygen you inhaled is picked up by red blood cells and whisked off to every cell in your body, so the mitochondria can use it to burn nutrients and release energy. Then you breathe out carbon dioxide, which is a waste gas those cells produced. It's like taking out the trash. So something as simple as breathing and having a heartbeat is actually your cells hard at work, staying alive and keeping you energized. Now, because cells need fuel and materials, the choices you make every day really matter. If you eat healthy foods, lots of fruits, veggies, whole grains, protein, you're giving your cells high quality building blocks and energy. For example, vitamin C from an orange helps your skin cells and immune cells stay strong. Calcium from milk or broccoli helps your bone cells stay sturdy. Hydration is super important too. 
Your body is about 60% water and every cell in your body needs water to do its job. Cells are like little water balloons. If you get dehydrated, they shrivel a bit and can't work as efficiently. So when you drink water, imagine all your 37 trillion cells going yay as they absorb it. On the flip side, if you load up on junk food or sugary drinks, your cells might get energy spikes but miss out on essential nutrients. Kind of like giving a city a lot of coal to burn but no good building materials or cleaning crew. Over time, cells that don't get what they need can't repair themselves well. So a balanced diet and plenty of water keep your cell cities thriving. Quick tip, want glowing skin or muscles that don't cramp? Treat yourselves well. That means do, eat a variety of foods, protein for cell repair, healthy fats for cell membranes, vitamins for various cell functions, drink water, and get enough sleep. Yes, even cells need downtime to repair DNA and rest. And avoid too much processed junk, smoking, yikes, bad chemicals that can damage cells, and excessive sun without protection. Sun UV rays can hurt your skin cell DNA. So wear that sunscreen to protect your cell's city hall nucleus. Small daily habits make a big difference because you're effectively the caretaker of a 37 trillion citizen city. Keep those citizens, cells, happy and they'll keep you happy. Now, most of the time your cells follow the rules and everything runs smoothly, but occasionally things can go a bit wrong in Cell City. We're going to talk briefly about cancer, not to scare you, but to understand what happens when cells don't behave. Remember, knowledge is power and we'll keep this light and empowering. So normally cells grow and divide, make copies of themselves in a very controlled way. They have stop signs and go signals built in. For example, if you get a cut on your skin, your skin cells get a go signal to divide and make new cells to heal the wound. When the wound is covered, they get a stop signal to stop dividing. Neat, right? Cells also know when to self-destruct, if they're too old or damaged, kind of like a cell retirement plan. But in cancer, some cells start to break the rules. A cancer cell is basically a cell that doesn't stop dividing when it should. Cancer happens when cells that aren't normal grow and spread very fast. Think of a rowdy factory in the cell city that just keeps making more factories without any order. These cells divide out of control and don't die when they're supposed to. They can form a lump called a tumor, kind of like an ever-growing construction project that never shuts off. This can crowd the healthy cells and interfere with how the body should work. Sometimes, cancer cells even travel to other parts of the body. Imagine rogue villain cells hopping on the bloodstream highway to start trouble elsewhere. This is called metastasis, but we won't get too deep into that. Now, importantly, most cells in your body will never turn cancerous. Your body has special guardian cells in your immune system that often catch and eliminate bad cells. And scientists and doctors are working hard on treatments to stop cancer cells. You can help your cells by avoiding things that damage them badly, like cigarette smoke, which carries chemicals that can mess up DNA and cause cells to misbehave, and too much UV sunlight on unprotected skin. Eating lots of antioxidant-rich fruits and veggies can also help protect your cell DNA from damage. Staying healthy overall gives your cells the best chance to keep operating normally. In summary, cancer is just an example of what can happen if cell behavior goes out of whack. But remember, your body has many defenses and smart systems to prevent this, and every day new treatments are being developed. The key takeaway, love your cells and they'll love you back. By living healthily, you're like the mayor enforcing good laws in Cell City. You help keep those cells under control and happy. Pretty empowering, huh? You are literally the boss of trillions of cells. Here is a DIY fun build your own cell model. Now for a fun hands-on activity to really bring this home. How about building your own cell? Not a real one, of course, but a model you can see and touch. This is a great way to visualize all those cell parts organelles we talked about, and you can do it with simple household items. Time to get creative. Here's one idea. Take a Ziploc bag, that's your cell membrane, flexible and controlling what goes in and out. Fill it with something jiggly, like jello or clear slime, to represent the cytoplasm, the jelly-like fluid inside cells. Then add a nucleus. 
a bouncy ball, a round rubber toy, or even a peeled orange works. Anything round for that cell city hall. Now, for mitochondria, you could use kidney beans or gummy candies, something oval shaped, ribosomes, maybe sprinkles or little beads. Endoplasmic reticulum could be represented by some folded ribbons or yarn. And the Golgi apparatus could be a stack of small paper pieces or a coil of clay. If you have an old shoelace or string, you could lay it in there as the road slash highways ER. Be sure to add a couple of beads or buttons as lysosomes, the recycling centers. Seal it up and voila, you have a squishy model cell. Feel free to get creative and use any craft or snack items you find. Perhaps ask an adult if you can raid the pantry for some dry pasta, candies, or fruit pieces. The goal is to have each item represent a part of the cell. As you build, quiz yourself. What was the nucleus again? Oh right, the control center. What's a mitochondrion? The power plant. By building the model, you're literally holding a cell in your hands and teaching yourself how it all fits together. This DIY project is not only fun and artsy, but it also helps you remember cell parts better. And when you're done, you have a cool model to show off, maybe to your kids, siblings, or friends. Challenge, see if you can explain to someone what each organelle in your model does. Teach them about your cell city. If you can teach it, that means you truly learned it. And feel free to get imaginative. Maybe give the organelles funny names or personalities. Captain Nucleus or Mighty Mitochondria. Learning is best when it's playful. Wow, we covered a lot, didn't we? Let's do a quick recap of our journey through Cell City. Here are the key takeaways. Your body is made of trillions of tiny cells, the basic building blocks of life. Everything you are is thanks to those cells working together. Each cell is like a mini city or factory with different parts, organelles, doing specialized jobs. The nucleus is the boss giving orders, mitochondria make energy, ribosomes build things, cell membranes protect and manage entry, and so on. Cells need fuel and care. They get nutrients from the food you eat and oxygen from the air you breathe. Treat them well with healthy food, water, exercise, and rest, and they'll keep you feeling great. You learned that sometimes cells can misbehave, like in cancer, when cells grow too fast and don't stop. But you also learned that there are ways to protect your cells and that science is on our side to handle those challenges. And we even built a mini cell model to bring learning to life. If you made one, awesome. If not, maybe give it a try later. It's like arts and crafts meet science. Isn't it comforting to know that inside of you is a whole universe of hardworking cells? And by making simple, healthy choices, you're like a hero to those cells? I sure think it is. Your body truly is a miracle of teamwork at the tiniest level. Before we wrap up, here's a practical life hack. Tomorrow when you sit down to eat, take a second to imagine all your cells munching along with you. Maybe at breakfast think, hey, this yogurt is helping my cells repair and grow. Or this water is going straight to my cells to hydrate them. Making that connection can turn an everyday routine into a reminder of how amazing your body is. And it might even inspire you to choose an apple over a candy bar once in a while, knowing your cells will smile, figuratively. Thank you for joining us on this tiny adventure inside yourself. If you enjoyed this peek into the world of cells, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Lifehacks Lab for more fun and fascinating body secrets. Got questions or cool facts about cells you wanna share? Comment below. Maybe you've wondered something like, how do cells know what to do? Or how do cells make us heal? Ask away and we might feature it in a future episode or reply in the comments. And speaking of future episodes, we're just getting started with how the human body works. If you thought cells were cool, wait till you see what's coming next. In our next episode, we'll explore another incredible part of you that works non-stop to keep you alive, even while you sleep. Any guesses what it might be? Stay tuned to find out. It's going to be another exciting journey through the wonders of your body. Until next time, take care of yourself and all those tiny cell citizens in you. Keep learning, stay curious, and remember, your body is awesome. See you next time.